subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you never miss any video lesson from Rao's IES Study Circle. Join the official Telegram channel of Rao's IES Study Circle to stay updated and get all the materials on the Telegram. The link to the channel can be found in the description box. Hello and welcome to Daily News Simplified, an answer to what, why and how of newspaper reading from our UPSC Civil Services examination perspective. Now today let us discuss the important news which has appeared in the new Delhi edition of the Hindu newspaper dated 30th of October 2021. The news to be discussed has been displayed on your screen and time stamping for the same has been provided in the description box below. So on this note let's start our today's discussion from our UPSC prelims and mains perspective. Now in continuation with our series of prelims 2021 question discussions, let's take up the question asked as question number 5 in set A. Now this question is with respect to urban cooperative banks. It says with reference to the urban cooperative banks in India, consider the following statements. Options were first, they are supervised and regulated by local boards set up by the state governments. Second, they can issue equity shares and preference shares. And third, they were brought under the purview of Banking Regulation Act of 1949 through an amendment in 1966. Now this topic was discussed in DNS and also asked in the prelims test series of full length test 3. The question asked here was, consider the following statements related to the regulation of cooperative banks in India. Options were, first, the primary agricultural credit societies are outside the purview of the Banking Regulation Act and hence not regulated by RBI. Second, the district central cooperative banks and the state cooperative banks are regulated by NABARD. And third, the primary urban cooperative banks are regulated by both the RBI and respective state governments. So again in this question was which of the statements given above is are correct. Now this topic was discussed in the DNS dated 17 September 2020 where the structure of cooperative banking and the regulation was also discussed as it talked about dual regulation with respect to urban cooperative banks especially with respect to RBI and registrar of cooperatives. Further, the explanation provided in the prelims test series stated that the banking laws were made applicable to the cooperative society only in 1966 through an amendment to Banking Regulation Act of 1949. And since then, there is a duality of control with these banks. So in this question asked by UPSC, suppose if you were confused even with second or third option, then the first option was a clue. So had you known about the duality of control with respect to regulation of urban cooperative banks in India, you could have easily eliminated option A, option C and option D, which would have left you with option B that is 2 and 3. So both second and third are correct whereas the first option is incorrect. So here in this question the correct answer was B that is 2 and 3. And you could have easily solved this had you gone through this TNS dated 17th September 2020 or you had gone through the explanation of the question provided under full length test third especially with respect to the amendment of Banking Regulation Act in 1966. So in this the correct answer was B that is 2 and 3. And regarding the prelims test series the correct answer was D. Now let's take up our first discussion appearing on page number 1 and also as a continuation on page number 8. Now this news says, no money left in MG Narega coffers, 21 states in the red. States are asking field authorities to artificially create demand, say center. So basically the center has accused states that they are artificially creating demand whereby states are providing employment under MG Narega because of which the sanctioned amount allocated to MG Narega in the 2021-22 budget of 73,000 crores have almost been spent. Now this amount of 73,000 crores was 34% less as compared to the amount which was sanctioned for MG Narega in the year 2020-21 which was 1,11,500 crores. So obviously there was a reduction of 34% with respect to fund allocated to MG Narega and because of this, this news highlights that 21 states are facing shortage for the funds. Further, the central government has accused the states that they are creating artificial rural demand so that work can be allocated under MG Narega. So now the problem is that there is no fund left and the only option available as of now is that states can pay from their own coffers, that is from their own fund, which can be reimbursed later by the central government. 
Now the problem here is that because of this lack of resources, this will impact not only demand based unskilled work in rural areas, especially at a time when the economy is facing distress. And this will also impact the livelihood security of such people. And overall, there will also be delay in payment of wages for those who work under the MG Narega scheme. So under the MG Narega Act, it provides for demand based unskilled manual work in rural areas for 100 days. Now, as you can see in this particular picture, it says that as many as 21 out of 30 states and union territories have utilized over 100% of their allocated funds under MG Narega for financial year 2022 till 29th October. And expense of MG Narega till 29th October has been at 79,810 crores. And this amount has already exceeded the amount provided to MG Narega in the financial year 2021-22. So this particular picture highlights about the situation of funds being utilized by different states for MG Narega. And this black color highlights that more than 100% of MG Narega funds has been utilized as you can see which is by most of the states. And in this regard the worst situation as has highlighted in this newspaper is that of Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh and West Bengal. So the lack of amount under MG Narega budget will definitely lead to delay in payment of wages for the workers who work under the MG Narega scheme. So in this regard, let us understand other reasons as well with respect to delay in payment of wages for the workers and also how has the government incorporated technology to solve this problem of delay in payment of wages and also to tackle other challenges pertaining to MG Narega scheme. So it says that following are the major reasons which cause delay in generation of pay orders for MG Narega. So the first reason is regarding delay in filing of attendance sheet because of delayed submission of those sheets by the Gram Rozgar Sahayak or non-entry of attendance by data entry operator within two days of closure of the master roll. So basically delay in submission of attendance sheet. Next, it says delay in measurement of work due to inadequate number of technical assistants or barefoot technicians. So again, other aspect is delay in terms of measurement of work. And here it also highlights about lack of human resource with respect to technical assistants and barefoot technicians. So with respect to measurement of work, there is also lack of human resources. Further, there is also delay on check measurement by junior engineer or assistant engineer on measurement submitted by technical assistant. Further, there is also delay in generation of wage list by data entry operator and authorization by additional program officer. Further, there is also delay in actual wage dispersal by banks and post office. Also because of lack of infrastructure at gram panchayat level. Also because of inadequate core banking solution based banking facility especially in the rural areas and because of mismatch of wage seekers account information due to wrong entry of account particulars. So apart from infrastructural inadequacy, wrong entry in the accounts also leads to delay in payment of MG Narega wages. So these can be said to be some of the reasons as to why MG Narega wages are delayed. Now other challenges with respect to delay in wage dispersal includes management of large number of bank and post office accounts. This also leads to delay in wage dispersal, parking of fund at various levels such as at gram panchayat, block level, line departments and also across district and state. So the parking of funds for MG Narega at different level in a district or in a state also leads to delay in wage dispersal. Further, manual transfer of payment orders to banks or post offices also leads to delay in payment of MG Narega wages. Other reasons include delays in transfer of records from field to data entry location which we have already seen and this at times also leads to mismatch with respect to final accounts. Now this delay from field to data entry location also lead to delay in release of funds from the Ministry of Rural Development to states and district authorities. For the wrong or erroneous entries into the management information system without any checks and responsibilities. Now this not only delays the wage disbursal but also create another set of challenges with respect to duplication of amount and also wrong data entry with respect to MG Narega attendance. 
Now another reason is with respect to inadequate use of Narega Soft, which is a web-enabled management information system for MG Narega. So Narega Soft is a local language enabled workflow based transaction level system and it provides detailed information regarding implementation of MG Narega scheme. So the challenge is that this Narega Soft's existing transactional capabilities are not being utilized in a proper way and rather underutilized. And lastly, inadequate manpower and skills at field level which we have already seen. So these can be said to be overall challenges with respect to delay in wage dispersal. Now after going through the challenges with respect to wage dispersal under MG Narega, let's go through the important use of information technology so far to strengthen MG Narega scheme. So the first aspect highlighted is Narega Soft. Now we have already seen that Narega Soft is a local language enabled workflow based transaction level system and it is hosted on the MG Narega portal and provides detailed information regarding implementation of MG Narega scheme. Now the portal provides public access to workers of MG Narega, thereby giving details of daily attendance of workers working on different aspects of MG Narega worksite along with the amount paid to the workers. So the management information system Narega Soft has been conceptualized by National Informatics Center along with Ministry of Rural Development and other stakeholders to address planning and monitoring needs of MG Narega scheme. Further, the Ministry of Rural Development relies on the fund utilization information which is generated through Narega Soft for release of funds to states and districts. And in this regard, this MIS portal Narega Soft provides transactional capabilities such as demand for work, work allocation, attendance on master rules, measurement book, generation of wage list, material procured, administrative expenses, and also pay order among other things. So basically, with the use of information technology such as Narega Soft, it not only provides detailed information with respect to implementation of MG Narega scheme, but it also provides information with respect to transactional capabilities such as demand for work, work allocation, attendance on master rules, measurement of book that is accounts, generation of wage list, material which has been procured under MG Narega and also administrative expenses and pay order. So overall it helps the Ministry of Rural Development in order to find out how much fund which has been disbursed for MG Narega has been utilized. And accordingly it overall helps the Ministry in release of further funds. Now another infusion of information technology is with respect to creation of National Electronic Fund Management System. And this fund management system has been created for direct benefit transfer or DBT under the MG Narega scheme. So the electronic fund management system streamlines the flow mechanism and brings down delay in payment of wages. And accordingly, Ministry of Rural Development has implemented National Electronic Fund Management System with respect to direct benefit transfer of MG Narega payout. So it says that this process reduces the delay in allocation of funds for payment of wages to the states and union territories and also removes parking of funds at various levels. Now as one of the challenge we saw that parking of fund at various levels further delays the dispersal of payment. So in this regard the national electronic fund management system addresses this problem of parking of funds at various levels as it directly transfers the benefits with respect to MG Narega payout. So in this regard, let us also go through other benefits of EFMS that is Electronic Fund Management System. So it says that it will automate all processes involved in crediting the accounts of the beneficiaries. Thus transfer of money to the account of beneficiaries will become easier. It further says that the automation process will eventually lead to real-time availability of data at all levels of governance for strategic decision making. And it will also help to find out how many beneficiaries under the MG Narega scheme has been paid or whose wages are unpaid so far. Further, the electronic fund management system will act as a seamless payment mechanism which will automatically ensure fund transfer and crediting of beneficiaries accounts thereby leveraging the aspect of core banking infrastructure of banks even at rural levels. So this aspect was also highlighted as one of the reason with respect to delay in generation of fund which was inadequate core banking solution based banking facility especially in the rural areas. And this aspect will be achieved through the National Electronic Fund Management System 
which provides for direct benefit transfer under MG Narega. So in this regard, it says that successful implementation of EFMS will do away with large number of bank accounts that are currently being operated at the Gram Panchayat level and with respect to other implementing agencies all over the country. Now this is because payments would be credited to the accounts of beneficiary directly from an EFMS account. So to a large extent, it will help to solve the problem of duplication of accounts and also wrongful entry with respect to MG Narega attendance sheet. Further, the National Electronic Fund Management System would also take care of the problem of large unspent opening balances in the accounts. It will help to streamline the fund flow processes and it will also lead to reduction of workload at block program office and also at the level of gram panchayats. So these can be said to be the overall benefits under the National Electronic Fund Management System with respect to direct benefit transfer for MG Narega payout. Now other measures with respect to information technology includes and strengthening of social audit system as this will bring more transparency and accountability in the program implementation of MG Narega. Further, another example is with respect to implementation of SECURE that is software for estimate calculation using rural rates for employment. Now SECURE is again a workflow based system and in SECURE the work name and work codes are received from MG Narega MIS that is Management Information System to concerned block or gram panchayat after approval of the labor budget. Now with respect to SECURE Detailed estimate for the block or gram panchayat will be created including drawings, location map and photograph of the work site before start of the work under MG Narega scheme. So the secure software will solve the problem of delay in measurement of work due to inadequate number of technical assistance. As it will provide the block and gram panchayat a detailed estimate of work with respect to drawings, location map and also photographs of the works before starting of the work under MG Narega. Further, the secure software will generate a detailed project report with respect to every aspect of work which is to be taken up under MG Narega. So this detailed project report will include total estimate amount with respect to MG Narega, total material cost and list of materials which will be used in the estimate with quantity, total semi-skilled skilled manpower cost, total unskilled wages, activity carried out in each work and also number of man days which will be needed to complete a particular work. And lastly, the secure software has helped in making the process easier as no files on estimates and sanctions are required to be sent from districts manually. So this prevents mismatch of information sent from district level and also prevent wrong details being sent from the district or local level. Now with respect to other measures on the use of information technology includes geographical information system based planning for MG Narega, time and motion study to increase efficiency of estimation of work for MG Narega, Jan Manrega a mobile application system as it will make information more portable for those seeking work under MG Narega, eSaksham which is a digital learning platform as it will help to create more awareness with respect to nature of work and also where the work is being provided. Cluster facilitation project to position thematic experts at all level in selected blocks who have poor implementation capacity for MG Narega and also project Unnati to upgrade the skill base of MG Narega workers. So these can be said to be some of the steps taken by Government of India to improve the IT infrastructure and also improve e-governance with respect to implementation of MG Narega scheme. Now despite number of steps taken by Government of India with respect to improving the information technology infrastructure with respect to MG Narega, still the following challenges still remains regarding the implementation of the program. These include identifying priority areas for employment. Second, there is a need to expand work which is covered presently under MG Narega and here use of GIS based planning can be taken up. The third problem is low rate of wage provided with respect to MG Narega work and also non-uniformity of MG Narega wages across states and union territories. The next problem is lack of awareness among locals with respect to the kind and nature of work allocated under MG Narega. Further, there is also the problem of poor banking and postal infrastructure in rural areas, especially in blocks and gram panchayats and also faulty MIS data. Now here, evidence on ground suggests 
that real time mis has made mg narega less transparent for workers and this has overall reduced accountability of the frontline functionaries of mg narega and overall use of mis has aided in centralization of the program so steps must be taken by the government to augment technology in order to make it more transparent rather than the technology making the entire work more opaque so as a way forward we can say that mis data must track the entire process of fund flow below the state level including request for funds and the responses must be accessible to all so there is a need for more openness with respect to mis data for mg narega next the government must strengthen the it infrastructure at block and gram panchayat level next the government of india must work with states and union territories to try to achieve a uniform payment of wages across states without steep variation across states and union territories and the government must expand the roll out under the project unnati as presently there are not many takers for unnati project of ministry of rural development which is a skill upgradation program for those mg narega workers who have completed 100 days of manual work under mg narega in the previous financial year thus the government must improve these aspects in order to further strengthen and improve the functioning and implementation of mg narega scheme now this topic of mg narega becomes very important both from a prelims and mains perspective in the prelims question can be asked with respect to the aspect of governance and rights issues and also from the aspect of economic and social development whereas in the mains question can be asked under gs paper 2 and also under gs paper 3 under gs paper 2 questions can be asked with respect to welfare schemes for the vulnerable sections of the population and also the aspect of e governance and in gs paper 3 under the aspects of indian economy and also science and technology so in this particular news we try to understand the reasons for delay in payment of wages under mg narega and also steps taken by government of india with respect to use of information technology to strengthen mg narega so after understanding this article let's take up the next article for discussion the next news to be discussed appears on page number 1 and also as a continuation on page number 8 and this news is with respect to uitai that is unique identification authority of india seeks indemnity from data protection bill of 2019 Now this personal data protection bill of 2019 was introduced in the parliament but was not passed and as of now a joint parliamentary committee is going into the details of personal data protection bill of 2019 so this news highlights that UIDAI has sought blanket exemption from personal data protection bill of 2019 as authority says that duplicity of law will impact its functioning now there is a provision under the personal data protection bill of 2019 whereby central government has a power to exempt any agency of the government from application of the personal data protection bill of 2019 so uidai is relying on this particular section of the personal data protection bill so that the central government can grant blanket exemption to uidai now the problem here is with respect to the KS Putta Swami judgment with respect to right to privacy now we all know that aadhar card has become compulsory with respect to opening new bank account with respect to pan aadhar linkage and also it is necessary for those people who are receiving either subsidies benefits or services for which expenses are incurred from the consolidated fund of india now this is as per the new aadhar act of 2016 So the name of this new act which was passed as a financial bill is the Aadhaar Targeted Delivery of Financial and Other Subsidies Benefits and Services Act of 2016 and the preamble of the act highlights that an act to provide for good governance efficient transparent and targeted delivery of subsidies benefits and services so the three aspects mentioned here are targeted delivery of subsidies benefits and services the expenditure for which is incurred from the consolidated fund of india to individuals residing in india through assigning of unique identity numbers to such individuals and for other related matters pertaining to aadhar act so very clearly those people who are receiving subsidies benefits or services from the government of india for which government of india is incurring expenses from the consolidated fund of india then for such services subsidies and benefits aadhar is compulsory now the issue which becomes important 
is with respect to providing of our financial and personal details in the backdrop of right to privacy judgment of K S Putta Swami. So the question becomes that whether providing these personal details to the government violates right to privacy, as highlighted under the K S Putta Swami judgment, as right to privacy was said to be part of Article Twenty One of the Indian Constitution, which provides for right to life and personal liberty. Now, even B N Shri Krishna Committee in its report suggested to amend the Aadhaar Act. to limit powers of uidai to collect personal data for processing now this particular recommendation was given in the backdrop of personal data protection bill as was submitted by bn shri krishna committee report so as of now uidai is expecting a complete blanket ban from the personal data protection bill through section 35 now let's go through the provision of section 35 of personal data protection bill it says where the central government is satisfied that it is necessary or expedient in the interest of sovereignty and integrity of india the security of the state friendly relations with foreign states and public order or for preventing incitement to commission of any cognizable offence relating to sovereignty and integrity of india the security of the state friendly relations with foreign states and public order it may by order in writing direct all or any of the provisions of this act shall not apply to any agency of the government in respect of processing of such personal data as may be specified in the particular order of the central government so under the personal data protection bill if data collected for aadhar meets any of these purposes then uidai can be exempted from the purview of personal data protection bill of 2019 now as of now this news is in transition so let's wait for the joint parliamentary committee to submit its report with respect to personal data protection bill in the upcoming winter session of parliament now based on our discussion let's take up this question asked by upsc in the year 2018 the question was consider the following statements first aadhar can be used as a proof of citizenship or domicile no the statement is incorrect second once issued aadhar number cannot be deactivated or omitted by the issuing authority now to answer this particular question you have to know about the powers of uidai so section 23 of the aadhar act provides for power and functions of the authority that is uidai and one of the powers of uidai includes power to omit and deactivate aadhar number and information relating to in such manner as may be prescribed by regulations so here the second statement also becomes incorrect so the question was which of the statements given above is are correct so in this regard the correct answer becomes d that is neither one nor two so we also need to know about the powers of uidai so uidai through the regulation can provide for demographic information and biometric information which is necessary for enrollment and processes for collection and verification thereof it also has power for collecting demographic information and biometric information from any individual seeking an aadhar number in such manner as may be specified appointing one or more entities to operate central identities data repository to generate and assign aadhar numbers to individuals perform authentication of aadhar numbers maintain and update the information of individuals in the central identities data repository and also to omit and deactivate aadhar number and information pertaining to the aadhar number its other powers and functions include specifying the manner of use of aadhar number and also the purpose for providing or availing various subsidies benefits services and other purposes for which aadhar numbers may be used providing for terms and conditions for appointment of registrars enrolling agencies and service providers and also revocation of appointments for them establishing operating and maintaining of central identities data repository sharing the information of aadhar number holders subject to the provisions of this act calling for information and records conducting inspections inquiries and audit of the operation for the purpose of this act further specifying by regulation various processes relating to data management security protocols and other technology safeguards under this act also specifying the conditions and procedures for issuance of new aadhar number to existing aadhar number holder leaving and collecting the fees or authorizing the registrars enrolling agencies or other service providers to collect such fees for service provided by them 
appointing such committees which may be necessary to assess UIDAI in discharge of its function promote research and development for advancement in biometrics related areas including usage of aadhaar numbers through appropriate mechanisms evolving or specifying by regulation policies and practices for registrars with respect to enrolling agencies and other service providers setting up facilitation centers and grievances redressal mechanism for redressal of grievances of individuals registrars enrolling agencies and other service providers and also such other powers as may be prescribed under this particular act so these are some of the powers of UIDAI under the Aadhaar Act thus this topic of aadhaar becomes important both from a prelims and mains perspective as you have seen questions have been asked by UPSC in the prelims examination so this topic gets covered under the aspect of polity and governance and in the mains under gs paper 2 especially with respect to welfare schemes for the vulnerable sections and important aspects of governance So in this particular news let's wait for the final report to be submitted by the joint parliamentary committee in the winter session of the parliament with this let's take up the next news for discussion the next news to be taken up appears on page number 9 it says india israel to boost military cooperation so in order to further strengthen the bilateral relationship between india and israel both countries have agreed to form a task force at the 15th joint working group on bilateral defense cooperation this task force will formulate a comprehensive 10 year road map to identify new areas of cooperation and this was decided at the 15th joint working group meeting which was held in tel aviv in israel so in this backdrop let's go through the important highlights of this particular meeting now the joint working group is an apex body constituted between the ministry of defense of india and israel's ministry of defense and this joint working group comprehensively reviews and guides all aspects of bilateral defense cooperation so based on this joint working group formed under the ministry of defense of both countries both india and israel have reviewed the progress made in military to military engagements including exercises and industry cooperation now the co-chairs of this group were also appraised on the progress made by the sub working group on defense procurement and production and research and development and in the meeting it was also decided to form a sub working group on defense industry cooperation and in this regard a terms of reference was also signed between india and israel now this formation of the sub working group will enable efficient utilization of bilateral resources between india and israel it will ensure effective flow of technologies and also sharing industrial capabilities between the two countries so in matters of defense cooperation india and israel have further strengthened their bilateral relationship through the joint working group further in the meeting it was also decided to schedule the service level staff talks in a specific time frame and with respect to this meeting it was then agreed to hold the next joint working group meeting in india based on a mutually convenient date now these informations can be handy if questions is asked with respect to growing bilateral relationship between india and israel especially in the area of defense cooperation between the two countries so in such a questions you can highlight the development which has taken place at the 15th joint working group meeting on bilateral defense cooperation between india and israel so this topic becomes important both from the perspective of prelims and mains examination and in your mains examination questions can be asked either under gs paper 2 or also under gs paper 3 from the perspective of security with this let's take up the next news for discussion the next news to be taken up appears on page number 10 now this news says nationwide pcv drive launched so the central government has launched nationwide expansion of pneumococcal 13 valent conjugate vaccine that is pcv under the universal immunization program as a part of azadi ka amrit mahotsav now pneumonia is caused by a bacteria called streptococcus pneumoniae or pneumococcus and it can cause many type of infections especially among children so the infections caused by pneumococcus bacteria includes lung infection which causes pneumonia blood infection which causes bacteremia sinus infection causing sinusitis it also infects the lining of the brain and spinal cord thereby causing meningitis and also affects the middle ear thereby causing the otitis media 
So children may suffer from these different type of diseases because of streptococcus pneumonia. So the government of India in a nationwide expansion of pneumococcal conjugate vaccine under the universal immunization program aims to create awareness for PCV and also provide these vaccines to children so that they do not get infection especially that of pneumonia. So under the universal immunization program government of India is providing vaccine for 10 diseases free of cost. These 10 diseases against which vaccination will be provided under universal immunization program are diphtheria, pertussis, tetanus, polio, measles, severe form of childhood tuberculosis, hepatitis B, meningitis and pneumonia caused by haemophilus influenza type B across the country, Japanese encephalitis and rotavirus diarrhea in selected states. However, vaccination against Japanese encephalitis and haemophilus influenza type B is provided in selected districts in the country only. So from your prelims perspective, you need to know these different diseases against which vaccination is being provided under the universal immunization program. And also the fact that government has launched nationwide expansion of pneumococcal 13 valent conjugate vaccine under universal immunization program. Now pneumonia is caused by the bacteria pneumococcus and this bacteria apart from causing pneumonia can also cause a blood infection, sinus infection, infection of the brain and spinal cord and also ear infection. Thus this topic should be mainly seen from the prelims perspective under the aspect of health under social issue. The next news to be taken up appears on page number 12 in the economy section. It says core sector growth deaccelerated to 7 month low of 4.4% in September. Output at 8 industries declined sequentially as rains hit mining and also construction. Now in this news you need to know about the 8 core sector and also which department or which organization publishes the index of 8 core industries. So the Office of Economic Advisor under Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade has released the index of 8 core of industries for the month of September 2021 and this Office of Economic Advisor functions under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. So the index of 8 core industries measures combined and individual performance of production in selected 8 core industries. These 8 core industries are that of coal, crude oil, natural gas, refinery products, fertilizers, steel, cement and electricity. So these are the 8 core industries for which the Office of Economic Advisor under Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade under Ministry of Commerce and Industry releases the index. So these 8 core industries comprise 40.27% of the weight of items included in the index of industrial production. Now the index of industrial production is published by CSO that is Central Statistical Office under Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. Now with respect to index of 8 core industries, this is published monthly with the base year as 2011-12. And with respect to weightage of different sectors in the index, highest weightage is that of the petroleum refinery production, that is this one. And the lowest weight is that of the fertilizer production, that is this one. Further, as we have already discussed, that the index of 8 core industries is published by Office of Economic Advisor under Ministry of Commerce and Industry and Index of Industrial Production is published by Central Statistical Office under Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. Now these information becomes important mainly from your prelims perspective. So from your prelims point of view you need to know about these 8 core industries and also the weightage, the base year and also which ministry or which department publishes them. So after understanding this let's take up our question for the day. Now based on our discussion this becomes your practice question for the day. It says which among the following sectors has been given the highest weightage in the index of 8 core industries. Options are A. Coal B. Petroleum refinery products C. Electricity and D. Fertilizers. Now coming to the answer of yesterday the question was consider the following actions. First climate litigation. Second climate change protest. Third dedicated quasi-judicial bodies and fourth 
political cooperation at national and international level so the question was which of the above is our among way or ways to ensure climate justice in this the correct answer was d that is all of the above so with this we come to an end to today's discussion thank you for watching dns